this presentation for ETX. Um, today we're talking about understand the psychology of financial markets thanks to technical analysis. So this is a, a presentation about uh, technical analysis itself and we're going to follow with a presentation, a quick overview of the solutions we provide to ETX. So this is a quick disclaimer. Uh, So just a quick background on Trading Central, a 16 year track record, founded and run by experienced traders and analysts. We have certified performance, uh, you can read our, our uh, awards there. Uh, we've been um, constantly part of the Technical Analyst Awards here in London since 2010 uh, and many, many more. So today we're bringing uh, our senior analyst Nicholas from Paris, from our headquarters. Uh, Nicholas is senior technical analyst on equities and equity indices at Trading Central. Um, as far as education goes, uh, Nicholas graduated from Paris Dauphin University with a master's in financial research. He's a qualified member of MSTA, which is the Society of Technical Analysts. Um, he has more than eight years of trading experience. And prior to joining Trading Central, uh, Nicholas served as a market economist for Exen BNPP, uh, Societe Generale, as a global macro strategy, and provides chartist and mathematical uh, approaches in, from intraday trading to swing trading and long term investments for institutional and private banks. Is regularly coded in Reuters and Dow Jones news articles. So, to start the presentation, I'd like to ask the word. Thank you. Thank you, André, and uh, so uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being with us uh, today. You can see some uh, familiar faces, so uh, it's good to see you again, and welcome to the to the others. Uh, so today, yeah, as uh, André said, so we're going to speak, of course, of technical analysis. Uh, because uh, this is our core business at Trading, at Trading Central, as you know. Um, so today we will focus our attention of uh, five different subjects, because as you know, technical ana analysis, there is a wide range of subjects uh, belonging to the technical analysis discipline. So today we will uh, focus our attention on uh, first uh, <coughs> trends and volume. This is clearly the cornerstone of technical analysis, so it's very uh, interesting and good to keep uh, this in mind. Uh, then we will speak about the gaps, uh, four different uh, kind type of gaps. So we will see how to how to use them, how to interpret them, and how to use them. Uh, then we will uh, speak about the classic classical technical patterns. So we will only focus our attention on the two uh, well-known technical patterns, which is called the head and shoulders and the flags pattern. So we will see how to use them, same, always the, the same story. Um, then we will uh, go quickly through the Japanese candlestick. Uh, so we will uh, try to see how, how does it work and uh, how we can uh, use them to find some timings uh, on the market and uh, help us to, to find some trading ideas on the market. And finally, uh, mathematical indicators, uh, especially moving averages, Bollinger bands, and uh, DRSI. Um, and we will uh, we will uh, end the presentation with a, a big example to explain and to see how we can combine tools uh, in order to find the timings uh, the markets. So let's start with the with the, the first part trend and volumes. So the first question to ask yourself when you have, uh, when you look at a chart is uh, where is the trend? So uh, it's uh, very important to to answer this question, and this is clearly the first question to, to ask yourself when you want to, to enter to open a position. Um, so there is three different uh, trends. Uh, you have the bullish trend, the bearish trend, and the sideways trend, the sideways market. And it's I think very important to keep this in mind that. There is not only two different trends, bullish or bearish. The market could be in a sideways trend, and uh, most people forget about this, uh, this, third, uh, this third trend, the sideways market. Uh, and uh, it's, I think, very 
uh, useful. It's very important to keep this in mind because uh, a third of the time, uh, markets uh, remain in a, in a flat consolidation when there is no trend. So uh, it's, uh, it's very important to adapt your strategy when the market is uh, in a sideways trend, in a sideways market. You have neither bullish or bearish trend, you are in a sideways market. And uh, so don't forget about this when you have a sideways market to, to adapt your, your strategy on the market. So uh, regarding the trend, uh, Charles Do, uh, which is uh, who is one of the one of the, the founder of technical analysis, um, thinks that um, markets uh, there is three different uh, uh, well markets evolve in three different types of uh, of, uh, of stage or phases. Uh, so the first one is the accumulation phase, either on a bullish or a bearish market. So uh, the three stages are accumulation, public participation, and excess or distribution phase <laughs> on a bullish market. So you can see the first one, accumulation, on this, uh, on this chart. So as I explained, accumulation phase takes place when the market uh, is in a, in a sideways, uh, sideways move, so neither uh, bearish or bullish trend. So very often, the accumulation phase takes place after a huge downtrend. So we, we can't see that this in this chart. But uh, we can uh, assume that there was a downtrend before the, uh, the sideways market. So within a trading range market, sideways market, you can see an accumulation phase. So informed investor uh, recognized that the market has assimilated all the bad news and uh, started to, to buy during the accumulation phase, during the trading range phases. Uh, then the second stage, the second phase is the public participation. So uh, the, the trend following uh, the trend followers uh, arrive in the market and start to participate uh, in the bullish trend. Okay, they have recognized that no, we are in a bullish trend. Uh, prices escape from the trading range phases, so now they can participate to the bullish trend. So this is the second phase, the participation uh, participation phase. So this is a quite interesting uh, phase for uh, for investor because. Uh, uh, especially for trend follower uh, investor, because uh, uh, you you can identify uh, the trend, so you can enter your position and try to take advantage of the new uptrend, uh, which uh, which took place after the, the escape of the trading range phases, the accumulation phase. So the very informed investor arrived in the market during the accumulation phase, during the trading range phase, but uh, the participation phase. Is a, is a very interesting one for, uh, for trend followers. And the last phase, uh, which is called the excess, excess phase or uh, the distribution phase, is the last one. So uh, you have, uh, during this phase, you can see a very uh, speculative volume. Uh, the market is going up very quickly, very strongly. And um, very often, that's also the, the time that, uh, at that time, uh, News writer, news, uh, newspaper start to, to publish very good news. Uh, okay, everything is fine, everything is okay. And very often it uh, it, uh, it corresponds to the last phase, so the, the excess phase or the distribution phase. So during this part, the last part, the, the, the first investor uh, who, uh, who, who bought the market during the accumulation phase start to uh, take their profits and to distribute the, the market. So uh, that's why we, we say that uh, uh, when, you, when you see in the newspaper that uh, everything is going, uh, is going well, sometimes it's the time to, to take profit on the market. So that's the three phases, the three stages on the, for, for the trend. You can see the same thing for the bearish market uh, at, the, at the opposite. Uh, then the volume, so we have seen the trend, the volume must confirm the trend. That's also uh, a thing that you have to, to keep in mind when you have a look at charts. Don't forget to look at volume because if you have a trend without any volume, it means that uh, the, it could be a false signal or it, uh, it could uh, clearly um, sending uh, uh, bad news uh, regarding the, the current trend. Uh, so on this chart, you can see that uh, prices escaped from the from the trending range phases. So it was a consolidation phase, all probably in a in a flag pattern. But let's let's call this a, a trending range phases. 
uh, and the volume was quite low, quite long now. And when prices escape from this uh, consolidation phase, so you have the price breakout, volume uh, starts uh, start to increase as prices making new highs. So prices start a new trend, the bullish trend, and the volume start to increase. So that's that's the, the the most common rule is that volume should increase when the price move in the direction of the trend. So you can see on that peak, for example, you have a strong peak on the volume, just right there. And during the consolidation phase, just after during this consolidation phase, so right there, volume are decreasing. So that's a very good signal of, uh, of a bullish market. Why? Because when you have a strong bullish acceleration, you have a strong volume, and during the consolidation phase, so during this phase, volume are decreasing. And then starting increasing again when the pricing are uh, moving up, uh, moving up again. So that's uh, it. Means that the up move is uh, quite healthy, and you can expect a further rise. So always uh, check the, the volume to confirm the to confirm the trend. And of course, if volume runs counter to the trend, it is a sign of weakness in the existing trend. Okay, so um, then uh, let's uh, let's see some uh, just some example, other example of uh, of the, the trend. It's you can see almost the same thing. Just uh, we're just saying uh, during the consolidation, the trend in wedge phase, or the sideways market, you can see uh, volume quite uh, quite low and uh, always the same volume during the the peak peak and low. When prices escape from the pattern, volume are clearly increasing. And you have a peak in volume on the top, and then during the consolidation phase, so during this phase, volume are decreasing. So it's quite normal. It means that you have entered in a classic consolidation phase within the bullish trend. So you can expect uh, prices to resume their uptrend after uh, after the consolidation phase. And then when prices are going up again, prices are uh, volume are increasing uh, increasing again. So it means that the, the trend, uh, the uptrend is healthy, and you can expect a further rise. Okay, so that's for the trend and volume. So now let's talk about the gaps. So a gap uh, is an area on a price chart in which there, re there were no trade. So you can see on this uh, example, uh, four uh, type of gaps. So you can see just right there, right there. You got one there, here, and here. So there are four types uh, of gap. Uh, the first one is the common gap. The common gap uh, takes place um, when there is uh, no major event that precede this gap. So you can see on this example on the chart, for example, this bearish gap just right there uh, occurs during the trading range phase. So uh, so it doesn't mean anything. That's the, the main thing to, to understand and to, uh, to 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 keep in mind is that when you can when you have a gap during a, a trading range or a consolidation phase. Uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. So uh, be careful not saying, okay, this morning uh, uh, market open in a huge bullish gap. Uh, it's a bullish signal. It's not always a bullish signal or a bearish signal. It could it, it could mean nothing if it happens during a trading range phases when the market has uh, where the, the market has no trend. So that's why uh, be careful about that. Yes. Would you would you pass a dividend gap down as a common gap? No, or no. Do you just use no, that? No, yeah. Do you don't need that? Yeah. That is why the market has gap due to. Yeah, the it's other thing. But That's it's the same story that for common gap. The interpretation is the same. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything about the market psychology, but uh, we don't uh, classify this uh, on the, the common gap. But uh, it's, um, yeah, we could say it's a fifth type of, type of yeah. gap, uh, the dividend gap. But it's um, it's the same interpretation that for the common gap, it doesn't mean anything about the trend, the current trend, or what to expect on the, on the market. Yeah, yeah. So the second one is the the breakaway the breakaway gap. So this one is very important. Why? Because uh, very often it occurs thanks to the validation of a pattern. So in this example, you have a trading range phases, which could be also. Uh, to be a consolidation phase, a flat pattern, if you look at the patterns, for example. And the gap occurs above, um, thanks to the validation of the pattern. So in this example, prices escape 
from the training range thanks to the gap. So in this kind of configuration, when the gap occurs uh, thanks to the validation of a pattern, it means anything. It means that we could expect now a new trend. So a new uptrend if it's a, a gap up, or a new uh, downtrend if it's a, a bearish gap. So in this example, we have a, a gap up, a bullish gap above the training range phases. So in this uh, in this configuration, uh, we call this a breakaway gap. Why breakaway? Because uh, it uh, thanks to the bullish gap, we uh, prices break above either a trend line or it could be uh, very often it's a, it's a trend line but uh, it could be uh, you could es escape from a, from a pattern a declining trend line or the, this kind of thing so when you can identify breakaway gap uh, you can uh, very often expect um, an a bullish acceleration if it's a, a bullish gap after this uh, after the breakaway gap so very often the breakaway gap uh, has not filled, so uh, we can hear very often that the gap has to be filled. Uh, not always, when you have a, a strong gap, and very often the breakaway gap uh, have, have, uh, have not filled. Uh, we, you, have, uh, you can see uh, just after a bullish acceleration or a bearish acceleration, because it is such a strong signal on the market that the market will not fill the gap and will accelerate up or down immediately after the gap. So it uh, reinforces. The, the bullish signal or the bearish signal on the market. So the common gap has very often filled very quickly and as I explained it doesn't mean anything but be careful the breakaway gap uh, very often are not filled so don't expect if you have a breakaway gap uh, you don't expect the gap to be filled if you want to enter into the market to open a position okay we have a bullish signal a price is escaped from the trading range let's go but maybe I could wait for a pullback or this kind of thing I think you can take a risk when you have identified a breakaway gap to enter uh, immediately the position. If you have a, a daily close, so if you consider that one bar uh, represents one day of trading, if you have a daily close like this, don't expect the gap to be filled before, uh, before enter a position. You can immediately enter the position because very often you will not see any, uh, any pullback to fill the gap. Okay, so that's for the breakaway. The third one is the measuring or the runaway gap. I think runaway is more popular. Runaway, runaway gap uh, occurs usually in the middle of uh, the current trend, of the, 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 the world trend. Uh, it's, uh, it's a gap uh, which means that, okay, the trend, uh, in this case the uptrend, uh, is, um, is, still, uh, is still in force and we can expect a further, uh, a further increase. A further rise, this gap could be filled more uh, more often than the breakaway gap. This guy, the the runaway, the runaway, runaway gap, sorry, can be filled um, very very often. Uh, but it just means that uh, trend followers are in force and they try to enter into the market and to participate to the bullish trend. So uh, it means that uh, it reinforces the bullish trend. If you vote after the breakaway gap, it just meaning that uh, okay, we are still in a bullish trend. Let's uh, Let's stick with the, with the position and let's see if we can see a higher prices. And the last one, the exhaustion gap, appears at the end of a bullish trend. Uh, it's clearly a sign of uh, restlessness of the market. Uh, you can also identify exhaustion gap with uh, other uh, technical elements such as uh, indicators, for example, uh, the RSI. You could see on the RSI that you are very overbought, for example. If you are very overbought on the RSI and you have another gap, you can maybe expect that it's uh, a breakaway gap. If you have seen the um, exhaustion gap, sorry. If you have seen the breakaway, the runaway, uh, when you see a third gap, investors begin to, to expect uh, to see an exhaustion gap. So uh, the third gap could be a, a warning signal uh, on the market. So combined with other elements, such as, for example, uh, short-term oscillator, such as the RSI, you can see, okay, if the uh, market is very overbought uh, and uh, we have another gap after our runaway gap, okay, so maybe it's time to take profit or to, to be careful. If we fill the gap very quickly, just after, we can say, okay, it's a warning signal. And if prices fell below, fill the gap and fell below the gap, in this, uh, in this configuration, Right away, you should uh, you should take profit and close uh, close your position because very often it's a it's a reversal a reversal signal. 
Okay, so that's for the gaps, the four, uh, the four types of gaps. Of course, if you have a question, you can ask me during the presentation or at the end, it's, uh, it's up to you. So this is example uh, of the, the four gaps. So this is the same thing. Uh, you can see the, the common gap. So uh, it happens uh, nothing uh, during the consolidation phase, then the breakaway gap. And then you have the exertion gap uh, with uh, what we call uh, a nylon reversal, so it's a candlestick pattern. Uh, I will uh, speak about this uh, about this later. But uh, when you have a bullish gap like this, another way to see if it's an exertion gap or not is to wait a little bit. And if you got <coughs> few sessions above above the, the gap, the bullish gap, and then you have a, a bearish gap. In this in this uh, configuration, we call this an island reversal on the uh, on the candlestick uh, pattern, and it's clearly a bearish signal. So uh, clearly, you can uh, you can say that now uh, the trend, uh, the bullish trend, is over, and uh, we could uh, either take profit or close position. And uh, obviously, uh, we could not open uh, open a position, a long position, on the market. So that's for the example. So now let's. Uh, speak about the technical patterns. So as I explained, yeah. You've shown that one the daily time frame. Yeah, the previous. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This one caught in other time frames. Like yeah, this time frame is a is a daily one. That's yeah. a daily chart. But what is great with technical analysis is that you can have the same interpretation either on a intraday chart, a daily chart, or a weekly chart. And of course, I forgot to mention that. Um, if you can identify a gap, a breakaway gap, for example, on a weekly chart or a monthly chart, it would be even better. It could be uh, such a, a buying, uh, a strong buying signal if it's a, a bullish gap. Uh, so uh, if you can identify such a breakaway gap on a weekly or monthly chart, it would be even better. And uh, the, 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 the signal would be even stronger uh, the, the, on, on this kind of time frame. And is this applicable to forex? Is it just yeah. Uh, uh, well, on the it's more on the, the equity market because on the forex you you will not see a lot of gaps. Mm -hmm. To be honest, sometimes you, you can see uh, some gaps, but uh, ninety nine percent of time you don't have gaps on the forex market. Uh, so uh, it's more for the, the equity market. Yeah. Okay. So the patterns. So you have two types of uh, of, uh, of patterns. Uh, the reversal trend patterns and the continuation trend patterns. So there is a lot, a lot of patterns. So today I'll just uh, explain the most uh, common pattern. So the first one is the head and shoulders pattern, which is a reversal trend pattern. So it's very useful when you uh, when you want to to um, to trade the market uh, and uh, when you when you look at a chart uh, for the, the purpose of forecasting future price trend, it's very useful to try to identify such a pattern, either reversal or continuation, uh, to 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 help you to fine tune time it. So uh, the end and shoulder is a is a reversal trend pattern. As you can see, you have so uh, the left shoulder, the right shoulder, and you have the head just uh, just there. Uh, and you have also the neckline, uh, which is uh, this, uh, this trend line. And the pattern is, uh, is validated when uh, prices uh, break uh, below the, the neckline. So uh, the pattern is validated when prices fell below this, uh, this trend line. Um, the rule at is that the, the shoulders have to, to be the approximately, approximately the same height. And uh, the the other rule is about volume. I think it's very important to keep in mind that uh, in order to identify proper uh, head and shoulders and very interesting head and shoulder, the, the peak, the volume has to, has to peak on the left shoulder and then the volume has to decrease in the, in the forthcoming, uh, forthcoming peaks. So the volume on this peak should be lower than the volume on this one. That's very important. And uh, the volume should increase when you break, when prices break below the trend line, break below the neckline. So, um, if you want to see if uh, head and shoulders is good or bad, uh, I think it's uh, it's important to look at volume. So, volume on this peak should be uh, clearly lower than on this peak, 
and volume should increase when your prices fell below the neckline, break below, break below the neckline. And another thing is that, of course, it's a reversal trend pattern, so uh, prices must have something to reverse. I mean, if you can identify a pattern, this kind of pattern, within a trading range, it doesn't mean anything. So that's very important to keep this in mind also. Very often people are telling me, okay, there is a head and shoulder, look at this, but there is no trend. We are in a sideways market, so it's not uh, obvious, it's not relevant at all. So be careful, you have something to reverse. So if you can identify a head and shoulders, you have to identify a clear bullish trend before uh, the, the head and shoulders take, uh, take place. So that's also very important. Yes? Um, obviously, as you said, volume is important. Now, with FX markets, there's not much volume data out there. So yeah. do, do the patterns still hold um, weight in the FX markets? Yeah, for the FX markets, you you just forget about the, the, volume. the volume. Yeah, so the, the, yeah you don't have the choice. But you can keep the other element. I mean, a clear bullish trend before, or a bearish trend if you uh, look, it, uh, for an, uh, look at an inverted head and shoulders pattern. Um, but the psychology should be should be the same. A clear bullish trend before the um, the right and left shoulder should have, have been the, the same height. Uh, and uh, yeah, but you, you don't have the time frames as well. Um, obviously, a five minute chart is going to be a little bit different to sort of be able to identify. Yeah. But with regards to a four hour, possibly an hour chart, if there is an identifiable trend, could you be, do these patterns still hold weight on that time frame? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why technical analysis is great because you can apply yeah, on all the, the timing. So uh, either on a, uh, on intraday or daily, weekly. But as I explained, for the gaps, the more uh, the, the the time frame is a uh, is a uh, is a long time frame, and uh, the most powerful will be the will be the signal. Yeah. So of course, uh, uh, we will see an example just after on the, on the equity market uh, that on the. Uh, a clear head and shoulders pattern on a weekly chart or a monthly chart, clearly it's a strong reversal signal yeah. for the, for the um, market. Excuse me. We've put the target over there. Well, yeah, I'm just about on the target, exactly. Well, so, uh, entry there, first of all. Entry, where do you enter? Enter the position just after the, the validation of the pattern. So, uh, prices break below the neckline and you can start to enter your position with a stop loss, for example, put on the top of the right shoulder. So, just uh, on this one. So we'll stop here and uh, you can uh, enter in a position uh, when prices fell below the neckline. Or you can wait the what we call the pullback. So it's a, it's a return move uh, back to the back to the neckline before prices go down again. But it's a bit risky. It's a bit uh, like uh, like for the gap, as I explained for the breakaway gap. Sometimes you can feel the gap, so it can give you an opportunity to enter uh, a better position on the market. But sometimes you will not see the pullback. So if uh, if uh, the, the pattern is validated and you say, okay, but I prefer to wait, maybe a technical rebound to have a better prices to enter the market, you take a risk that uh, prices can go down directly, accelerate down uh, immediately, and you will miss the trade. So that's that's a risk uh, uh, you have to, to take uh, into account. But the better strategy is uh, to enter after the pullback, so just below the neckline. When you have the, the return move back to the neckline, yeah, that's the perfect entry point. But unfortunately, uh, you will not have always the perfect entry point on the on the market. It's, uh, it's too much. Uh, it's too much difficult. So uh, then you can combine with such other technical elements, uh, maybe with some uh, technical indicators or a Japanese candlestick. Uh, sometimes you, it could help you to, uh, to to see if you can expect or not the pullback, and if it's better to wait a little bit, or if it's better to go right now. Okay, that's an interesting entry point. So, combining uh, with uh, with the help of other technical elements, technical indicators, or Japanese candlestick, or maybe gap, you can uh, you can uh, it can help you to to find your timing. Excuse me. So as, you, as the price is moving up, mainly for the forex market, yeah. would you say what te other technical indicator would you say would work as, as this is progressing this pattern? Which, as a reversal, which is like a 
because it would a statistics oversold kind of indicator or something like that to show that it's yeah it's starting to be oversold. Would is that what you would match up with that pattern to show that it's, you know yeah the RSI reversing. is fine. We will see uh, this later. Maybe. Right, okay. So uh, the RSI is uh, is good. At the end, we will uh, I will show you an, an, uh, an example of how we can combine tools. Yeah. It's pattern, RSI, uh, candlestick, etc. So it will be maybe clearer for you uh, at the end. But the RSI is fine to answer your, your question. Are you going to cover MACD? Yeah, we use also MACD. So in the or technical analysis, you can find. Uh, we you will not see the, the MACD. We use uh, we have some kind of templates on which you can find uh, moving average, Bollinger bands, uh, RSI. Uh, but uh, we use uh, MACD in our know, analysis to take uh, our decision. So uh, yeah, we don't put it on the chart uh, because otherwise is really, there will be too much indicators and it's uh, a bit complicated for clients to understand what we're saying. So, uh, but we use uh, on a personal, uh, uh, each analyst uh, have a look at the, the MACD to, 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 uh, to take his decision to see if uh, it's bullish or bearish on the chart. Yeah. So MACD is also uh, and it's a, a, a good uh, complement to the to the RSI. Using RSI and MACD is quite uh, quite good. Stochastic and RSI, which one is better? It's almost the same thing. Uh, we use more the RSI, but stochastic is great also. Uh, I think the, the as I said, the, the most uh, important thing is to combine two different indicators which uh, bring you uh, different information. So the RSI and the MACD could be right, or stochastic and the MACD could be right. Stochastic and RSI, uh, in, my, in my opinion, it doesn't give you a lot of more information and sometimes it could maybe a uh, mixed signal. Uh, the best things to do is to, is to try which indicators you, you like the most, you understand the most and you, are, you, you, you like to use. And if you prefer stochastic rather than RSI, just use stochastic. Uh, after you have a lot of things, as I explained, technical analysis, it's a wide range of subjects, of concepts, a lot of technical indicators, a lot of candlestick pattern, etc. So uh, the best things to do is try to see uh, which uh, technical indicators you like the most, you are the more comfortable with, and, uh, and try to, do, to, use, uh, to use that. But uh, yeah, my advice would be try to, to find some uh, complementary indicator, such as uh, MACD and the RSI, for example, or MACD and stochastic. Mm. During a news trade, when, when an event is about to happen, like the news coming out, yeah. uh, from the mental record releases, and you have this uh, head and shoulder showing up, mm. maybe you're wise to still place, place a trade on what's happening in the news. Sorry, why is to what, sorry? Because the news coming out, news yeah, news, yeah, yeah. And you have this pattern, let me show you. Yeah. You, want to, or you want to enter a trade. Yeah. Would this still be validated? Because the news could knock off what you thought was going to happen, isn't it? It could, it could send the price. What she's saying is, if an economic event is, is, a, is going to come out, yeah. she's looking at it technic from a technical point of view. This is setting up. She's looking to enter. Uh, if I hold back, for if there's a, an event coming back that could affect that, you know, that currency. Uh, yeah. What she's saying is, would that devalidate this potential pattern if the news comes out? <coughs> you know, if it could be. Uh, you know, change After of interest the rate, of the yeah, pattern. Yeah, 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 would it devalue the pattern sure. depending on the news? Yeah, well, as a technical analyst, we believe that uh, all the information is um, is uh, already included in the chart. But you can ex you can, um, for example, if you if you enter your position after the validation of the pattern, and then you have a, a news. As long as prices will remain below uh, the upper uh, the the right shoulder of the pattern. You can uh, you can consider that the pattern is still valid, and you can still expect uh, the the down move. So if after the economic news prices uh, go above the right shoulder, you can say okay, so now the shoulder the, the pattern has been invalidated. Uh, I was wrong, uh, and uh, it's time to close the position, and I have been stopped out. Okay, so you wait for the end of the news event before you validate this head and shoulders. If the, the, the economic news is coming at the same time that the validation, or, yeah, you can wait for uh, for the for the confirmation. Yeah, it's uh, yeah.
So just a word on the target uh, to finish. So you have to uh, to to uh, that's uh, yeah the, the minimum target would be the vertical distance between the head of the 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 head of the pattern and the neckline. Projected downward from the pre the breakout point of the, of the neckline. So you can see on this example, uh, you can find the, the minimum target for the for the other shoulder. Okay, so the flag pattern now. Uh, so uh, the previous one was a reversal trend pattern. Just just going back to the yeah. way you said the measuring of the targets. Yeah. Do you use the closing price of the bar or the swing highs of the bar? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, to be honest, it or depends. Just find, say, for example, there you can that there'll be a series of swing lows at yeah, the yeah, shoulder, yeah. and then obviously there's the closing price. Do you put your neckline at the closing price at the swings, yeah. or do you put it as a band to sort of say you've got a zone of potential support, yeah. and then use that as a sort of, you know, say for example, there's 10 ticks in between the band, yeah. you think, okay, you know what, I'll put my bid and my offer. Yeah. In between, or there is no. Where, where is it? You sort of. Work? There is no one rule, yeah, about these things. Uh, analyst maybe uh, thinks a bit different about these things, but what we can say is that I prefer to use closing uh, price. I think it's uh, it's a bit safer, but uh, and you will find uh, I think um, it's it's, uh, it's it's a bit less risky because uh, uh, regarding the target. If you if you use closing price, you will have a, a target which could be uh, a little bit higher. Yeah. So uh, it will be maybe you will have more chance to, to reach the target. Yeah. So uh, maybe it's better. And uh, but it depends on the configuration maybe. But uh, on my side, I always have a look at the closing price to see also if is valid, is great. Uh, I think it's better if the you know the closing price you have the the. The shoulders, uh, which have the same height, etc. I think it's yeah. better to forget about the spike sometimes. And, uh, yeah, so it. yeah, I do prefer to, to use closing price. So the flags, which are continuation trend pattern. So the previous one was a reversal trend. This one is a continuation trend pattern. So we can use this one within a, a, a trend, bearish or bullish, to take advantage to a consolidation phase to enter the market, to enter into the market. So uh, that's a, that's a common uh, a common pattern. So uh, prices uh, so uh, fluctuate uh, within a narrow range and uh, and mark the consolidation before the previous uh, move raising. So uh, you have the, the previous bullish trend uh, represent representing with the, the dotted line. You have the flagpole, which is the the previous up move, and then you have the consolidation phase. So you can see this. Uh, <coughs> this, uh, this small uh, consolidation uh, and uh, that's these kind of patterns are very interesting to, to enter into, into a market uh, because if you want if you are for example a trend follower and you want to wait for a, a breakout for example at the beginning of the, of the presentation uh, I talked about uh, the accumulation phase and the participation phase and distribution phase if uh, if you didn't buy within the accumulation phase or within the trading range, you can wait for the a first up move, and you can wait for the the consolidation phase to say okay it's a consolidation within a bullish trend, and we can take advantage of this consolidation pattern to uh, to open position and to enter into the market. So the signal will be given by breaking the upper end of uh, the, the the channel, the bearish channel for for a bullish flag or uh, the uh, bullish channel for a bearish flag and uh, the target uh, will be uh, will be will be fine by uh, reporting the length of the flagpole uh, from the breakout of the, of the pattern and you can find a minimum target but for this kind of pattern you can also use Fibonacci projection level which could be uh, very interesting especially for more, uh, more longer term uh, targets so uh, these ones are also um, very uh, good for, for investors to try to enter a market but within a, a well-defined a well uh, previous trend. So either a bullish trend or a bearish trend. And uh, you have to wait for the breakout of the pattern before uh, entering the position. And a very uh, common stop loss is the, the previous bottom 
uh, of the of the pattern. So, what, what is the entry again on this on the bullish? The breakout when prices break above the declining this declining trend line. So, so you expect you prices es uh, escaping from the from the pattern, validating the pattern. Yeah. You can consider that the pattern is validating, and you can uh, enter the position with a stop loss. Uh, just below the previous uh, the previous bottom. But if you want to have a more conservative approach, you can wait for making new high. So uh, you can consider that okay, prices escape from the pattern, but are still capped by the previous top, previous high, coming from the the previous bullish trend. So uh, I prefer to wait because maybe indicators are not so great for this kind of thing. Uh, you can uh, you can wait for uh, for a new. For a new high, saying okay, prices are making new high, has validated a bullish pattern, so now I can go. But it's always the same story. If you wait too much, you will be very high, and your stop loss would be very far away. So, in order to to have an interesting risk to reward ratio when you enter the position, it will be much more complicated. So that's why that's why sometimes it's better to to be a bit more aggressive with a stop loss, which is a bit uh, a bit closer, and to expect uh, the new uplay. Would you put your pending order on? Or will you watch for the price to go above? <coughs> Sorry. Would you, would you put a pending order? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can use pending you order. It depends on your strategy, but yeah, you can use the order that you that you want. Yeah, why not? Okay, so that's for the pattern. Uh, no, we're gonna speak about the candlestick. Uh, no, such uh, example. First, as I uh, as I told you, uh, the, the, the previous one. Yeah, thanks. Um, so this is an example just to show you the, the hand and shoulders, uh, which was uh, which was very clearly uh, perfect. So uh, you can see this is the, the CAC 40, the French uh, the French index. So this is a long term chart. This is a weekly chart, and you can see so 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9. So. Uh, you can see that just before the crisis, 2008, 2009 crisis, and the huge down move, you can see the formation of this very uh, beautiful and perfect left shoulder pattern. Uh, so you've got the neckline, you've got the left shoulder, right shoulder, and the head, and uh, you've got the signal when you validate, when you break, when prices break below the, the neckline. And you can see that uh, the reversal uh, signal was uh, very clear. And perfect for uh, for technical analysts. So uh, that's uh, that's how to use the, the chart pattern uh, when you try to to forecast future price trend. And what is also very interesting to note to notice is that you have seen a rebound. So you can see uh, I have calculated the major move target, the theoretical target of the pattern, just right there. And you can see that prices have posted a rebound. After uh, reaching the major move, the theoretical target of the pattern, so that's pretty amazing for technical analysts to see when uh, prices uh, reach some theoretical target and you have a, a, a consolidation within the current trend. It means that uh, the pattern uh, is uh, clearly valid, and we could expect a further a further decline. So uh, it was only a technical rebound within the new bullish trend, and then prices uh, went uh, strongly down again. So that's an example of uh, a head and shoulders and how, how to use uh, this one. What, what measurements do you use for that target? Sorry. What's what, sorry? What measurements do you use for the target? Yeah, as I explained, that's the vertical distance between the head, top of the head and the neckline. Yeah. So the, that's the, the red arrow. Projected downward from the breakout points below the neckline. So you just report this, uh, this arrow, this red arrow. Uh, just uh, below the neckline, and you can find the target. So the major move target was there of the theoretical of the pattern, but it doesn't mean that that's the end of the movement. As I explained, a reversal, a head and shoulder is a reversal, strong reversal uh, trend pattern. So uh, very often it means that you have entered into a, a huge uh, bearish uh, configuration, and that was the case uh, in this uh, this example on the CAC 40, but not all the indices uh, at that time. So the second example, on the, just a, a flag, classic flag. Uh, I have added some volume, so you can see that 
prices are in a clear uptrend with a, a peak in volume at the top. You can see volume which are clearly decreasing during <coughs> the pattern. So that's very important. When the pattern is in formation, the flag pattern, volume uh, has to, uh, to decrease. And uh, thanks to the validation of the pattern, so right there, prices go up again and uh, resume their, uh, their uptrend. So clearly for a trending plan on this chart would have been just a move after this, uh, this candle, this day of trading, to open, you can decide to open long position with a stop around the previous bottom and expect, try to expect new high. Of course, it will not work anytime. I'm not saying that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a perfect strategy uh, which will work every time, but uh, it could clearly help you to find some entry point on the market with a clear strategy, with clear stop loss. So in this configuration, the stop loss just below the previous bottom, and uh, you wait for the validation of the pattern, and then you can expect um, a new up move. And the volume confirmed the pattern, the bullish trend, with the peak on the top, and then decreasing volume during the consolidation, the consolidation phase, meaning that it's just a pause within the bullish trend, and uh, then prices go up again. And you have this one, which is a bearish one. He don't speak about this one, but it's the same thing. You know, bearish acceleration, peak in volume. During the technical rebound, volume are decreasing. So you can say, okay, this technical rebound is not relevant. Just a consolidation within the previous bearish trend. And then prices go down, go down again. So the same strategy, you can wait for the validation of the pattern, the breakout of the bullish channel with a stop loss around the previous stop and you can try to expect further decrease. Just briefly looking at that chart there, you can have a gap down from the breakout point. Can you then argue those three consecutive gaps there after there was your breakout, then you've got your entries and then your resorption as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is clearly a, a breakaway gap, for example. So that's perfect. It clearly reinforces the signal. Yeah. Exactly. And it's the same thing on this one, by the way. Yeah, that's it. So would you classify um, in May, in the middle, there's a mini flag? Yeah. This one? Yeah, so a very marginal flag. Is that decreasing volume or kind of second? Yeah. I know it's not I know it's not a good example of a flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this one would be... It's been tricky because... What you can say when you are there is that you are just below the previous stop. So you can see that you have a, a huge bearish candlestick, this yes. one. So you have the, the other uh, bearish, um, bearish, uh, bearish gap, this one. So uh, to be honest, I would have been bearish <coughs> below the previous stop at that yeah, time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Until there. Yes. Until there. So I would say, no, it's not time to buy, not time to buy, not time to buy. And then, just here, I would say, okay, now we are making new high, we have pushed above this key resistance threshold, now we can try to buy <coughs> and to take advantage of this up move. So clearly, these two signals were clearly bearish at that time. It doesn't work, but for me, it were, the market was saying, okay, don't do anything or try to enter a short position with a stop loss around the previous stop until uh, prices can break above this key resistance threshold. If you, have, if you have a pending order and your pending order there's a gap, yeah, um, and the, the gap goes past your pending order, will your order actually fill at the best price, or are you just simply not act activate? Yeah, uh, regarding, <coughs> I will have to check. Uh, to be honest, I cannot give you a clear answer right now. If it's uh, on these flag if it will be validated. They're, great, they're gapping just just where you yeah. want to go. So if you've got a pending order, this, there is a risk. It's look whether you get in or not. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. So that's why it's better to to be uh, on the market when you when you want to enter your position. It's better to, especially at the opening uh, of the of the market, if you are on the, the equity market, it's better to be to be to be there your your computer and to to choose the, the good order. I yeah. think if it's possible for you, it's always better. Otherwise, you will be executed at a very bad uh, bad prices. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the risk. Okay, so that was for example. Now let's say a word about uh, the Japanese candlestick pattern. 
briefly because it's a very uh, huge, uh, yeah, wide range of, uh, of concept. Um, so it first appeared uh, in the at the end of the 19th century and developed especially by the by the Japanese uh, rice trader. It's uh, it uh, it become popular in the in Europe more in the, the middle of the the 20th uh, the 20th century. So uh, a bit later. So I think there is two uh, two interest two subjects coming from the Japanese candlestick. The first one is uh, how to display um, the how to display the data uh, on a chart. So how to understand how the, the the market is moving. And the second one is uh, is the heart of identifying combination of candlestick in order to find some uh, signal on the market bullish or bullish or bearish. Um, so let's switch to the, the other one. So the first one to display the, the data. What is great with the Japanese candlestick is that you can see easily on, for example, one day of trading, but one bar can represent uh, one hour of trading, one day, one week, or one month, whatever. Uh, so you can have uh, a quick look on what uh, what's going on on the market. So the opening price, the closing price, the high, the high price of the day, or the. the, the yeah, the day, if we consider that it's a daily, uh, a daily chart, so one candlestick represents one day of trading. So you will have, you will, you will see the high of the day, the low of the day, the open and the close. If it's a, a white candle or a black candle, uh, so you've got the body, you've got the shadow, the shadow are there, the shadow are there, and you've got the body of the on the candlestick. So it's. Uh, it's interesting when you when you have a look at the when you use candlestick pattern because you can see very quickly, very easily, and clearly on the chart uh, what's the low of the day, what's the high, what's the opening price and the closing price. Uh, was it a bullish session or a bearish session? So that's uh, that's very useful for you to use the, the candlestick pattern. And the other way, uh, the other subject with the the candlestick is the so as I said, the art of identifying combination of of, uh, of this pattern, of this, uh, this candlestick, because uh, you, can, uh, you can see some combination <coughs> of, uh, of, of this pattern. Yes, please, thanks. Uh, and uh, you can also identify some specific uh, candlestick. So that's, uh, for example, a doji. So a doji uh, forms when a secret is open and closed are virtually equal. So uh, you can see that the opening price and the closing price are the same. So you have a huge uh, lower shadow, huge upper shadow, and uh, you have uh, almost no uh, body on the on the candle. So the, the, it means that the opening and the closing price was uh, was almost the same. And uh, this kind of configuration, which is called a doji, very often it indicates a reversal uh, in trend. So if the doji occurs after a huge uptrend, it could be a first signal of. Uh, of a reversal trend, but it's not enough to be honest to say uh, if you are in a if you are in a strong bullish trend, if you see a doji, it doesn't mean that uh, the trend will uh, reverse downward. Uh, we need to see, uh, we need to wait for confirmation, and uh, very often the doji occurs with a combination of other candlestick, uh, and you can form uh, island reversal, you can form morning star pattern or evening star pattern, or this kind of thing. So uh, it, uh, yeah, as it said, it needs clearly confirmation. But it's the first signal that the market is uh, maybe asking some question, uh, and the, the, the trend uh, could be uh, maybe over. So then you have uh, such uh, example of uh, candlestick pattern. So I will be quite brief because uh, we have to, to move forward, and uh, it's. Uh, this one, for example, is the morning star. As I explained, you have a combination of candlestick, and this kind of combination can help you to uh, to find opportunities on the market. So the morning star pa pattern is a uh, is a reversal uh, reversal uptrend uh, candlestick pattern. So you can see that the first bar is a large black bar. The second one, so within the bearish trend, so we can uh, assume that the previous trend was bearish coming from there. Bearish, bearish. 
you have the black candle, so the bearish move there. Then you have uh, the small body candle, which could be either a black or, or white, uh, which occurs just below the previous bar. And then the third bar, which is a large white uh, candle, uh, means that uh, you validate the pattern when the, this candle uh, is, uh, is finished. And the day after, so on, on this day of trading, you can say, okay, we have a bearish trend, but the pattern has been validated. So black candle, the white or black candle below this one, and the day after a huge white candle, you can expect the, 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 reversal, uh, the reversal of trend, and you can try to find some, uh, some bullish strategy the day after. So uh, that's a classic formation which could help you to uh, find some, uh, some reversal, uh, reversal trend. In this case, reversal uptrend. So after a downtrend, uh, the validation of uh, this pattern, which is called morning star, uh, is, uh, could be an interesting signal. That's the same thing for other examples. So uh, this one is a bullish angle fig pattern. On this example, you can also have bearish angle fig pattern. The specific configuration, uh, which is important to say is that uh, the, the large candlestick, uh, clearly the body of this uh, candlestick, you know, uh, or maybe the body of the black candlestick is included within the next candlestick, which is white and which is very large. So in this kind of configuration, it's the same thing that the morning star, you can expect a reversal uptrend. So that's another configuration. Uh, coming from the Japanese candlestick, who can help you to uh, to find some reversal signal and to find some uh, trading strategies on the on the market. So this one is bullish, so you can expect a bullish move just after the validation of the pattern. But you have the same thing for the bearish engulfing pattern. So coming after a huge move, if you see a bearish engulfing pattern, can give you a, a signal that maybe it's time to take profit and to close your position. And the third one, uh, it's just a summary of hammer, hanging man, inverted hammer, and, uh, and shooting star. So it's a uh, other configuration which can help you to, to find some uh, taking profit level or maybe a reversal uh, up or down trend. So uh, I will be brief on this one because it will take too much time to explain exactly how does it work with a lot of examples. But the idea, if you want to, if you, if you like this kind of thing, the Japanese candlestick, there is a, a lot of uh, books who can uh, clearly explain this and uh, you can find some uh, detailed information on uh, all the patterns which exist uh, and uh, you can use to, to find your timings on the market. But that's the main, uh, the main pattern. And that's very interesting. I think very often people forget about the, the Japanese candlestick, but to be honest, I think it's pretty uh, pretty interesting and uh, it can give you very uh, strong signal uh, in addition to other to other signal coming from a pattern for example the validation of pattern or indicators it's very interesting to add the Japanese candlestick uh, pattern okay so let's now speak about the technical indicators maybe some example first yeah such uh, some examples so this is a, a chart of Schneider uh, Schneider Electric uh, the French stock. Uh, so you can see just right there. I wanted to show you the bullish uh, uh, engulfing, uh, engulfing pattern right now that we have seen in the last uh, couple of uh, of, uh, of days. Uh, so uh, it could be a first signal that the bearish trend is maybe over, and maybe we can expect a technical recovery. So uh, just an example of a current uh, bullish engulfing pattern. Yeah, regarding this pattern, what's very important to understand also, I think, uh, is that the, the pattern will be more relevant if it happens uh, in, um, in, the, in the direction of the, of, the strong, of the strong trend. I mean, for example, what I wanted to show you with this chart is that we can identify a bullish engulfing pattern just right there, so within a bullish trend. But uh, what you can see is that the, the stock, so this is a UK stock Tesco, 
is in a strong bullish trend for a while since 2010, maybe uh, even uh, even longer. So you are in a strong bearish trend. So if you can identify such such a pattern, the bullish engulfing, it's not enough to say, okay, no, I have seen the bullish engulfing pattern, it's time to buy. In this example, it's clearly obvious that you have a strong bullish trend, and so uh, this kind of uh, signal uh, would be uh, should be avoided uh, when the um, when the overall market is bearish. If you identify a bullish engulfing pattern, but you have only one signal coming from the you, you have no other signal, uh, neither a chart pattern or a bullish divergence on indicators, for example. Uh, this kind of signal should be avoided. So I just wanted to show you that it's not, uh, it's not automatic when you have seen a, a bullish engulfing pattern, for example. If you are in an overall bearish trend market, it's better to, to avoid uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of signal. And I think in, a, in, the, in the next chart, uh, yeah, I wanted to show you the good one and the bad one. So on this chart, it's also from Tesco. So you have a strong bullish trend here, and you have the bearish engulfing pattern just right there. But it happens, as I say, it happens within a strong bullish trend. So this one should be avoided because it happens within the strong bullish trend. But this one, another bearish engulfing pattern, happens after the the, um, the reversal uh, the reversal trend on the chart. I mean, uh, prices fell below the previous bottom. So you know, prices are making new high. And uh, each new low are higher than the previous low, so you are in a bullish trend. But thanks to the breakout of this support, this, uh, the, dotted, the dotted line, uh, it means that we are no more in a bullish trend. Uh, and uh, at least we are at least in a neutral market, or maybe a bearish trend, we don't know. But we can see that this one is powerful, because uh, just before prices have uh, broken below the key support threshold. So this one is a good one, and we can say, okay, uh, prices, uh, we have a first signal of, uh, of weakness. So the overall bullish market is over, and we have seen the, the bearish engulfing pattern. So this one could be a good signal. So I just wanted to show you that uh, sometimes it's better to avoid uh, this kind of uh, signal. So the technical indicators now, you have uh, a lot of technical indicators. Um, so I will not uh, speak about all the technical indicators, of course. As I explained, you can switch uh, an RSI with the stochastic if you prefer. So the most common uh, are the moving averages. Uh, that's quite simple. I think you, are, you already know about this, but uh, the, the, the purpose is to, of course, smooth out price action and to confirm the mid-trend and the long-term trend. And it's very important uh, to use moving average to avoid counter trend position in the strong directional market. That's, I think, the most important thing to, to, to keep in mind uh, using uh, moving average. And it could also help you to generate buy or sell signal, sorry, thanks to the, the crossing of long and short moving averages. So uh, I think the next example is perfect for moving average. It's an example also on, uh, on Schneider Electric. So also the, the French stock. So you can see that it's a very long-term chart. Uh, that's a weekly chart. So one bar represents one week of trading. So you've got 2000, uh, 2005 until 2011. And what I wanted to show you is, of course, that using uh, two moving averages, so this is the 21, the 20 moving average in, uh, in red and the 51 in blue, and you can see that uh, I did not mention the bullish cross, this one. I have a circle, the bearish cross, the cross between the moving averages. So uh, you can see the, the bearish cross between the 20 week moving average and the 50 week right there. The bullish cross between uh, also the 20 and the 50 week moving average here. The bearish cross here. And we can say that between 2005 and 2007, almost eight, uh, just using these two moving averages, you could be in the in the good direction of the market, because as long as price, as long as the 20 week moving average is above the 20, the 50 week moving average, you can consider that you are still 
in the same uh, direction. The direction is still the same. So in this case, you are still in a bullish trend. So uh, it's quite obvious that uh, using this only these two moving averages, so it's quite simple. You could find some interesting sell signal in the market. So just right there with the the, the bearish uh, crossover between the 20 and 50 week moving average, and then you can see that all the way along. The 20 week is evolving below the 50 week moving average. Then you have another process, okay? So the bearish trend is over, and then you have a bullish trend, and the 20 week moving average is above the 50 week moving average until the top, and then you have another cross, bearish moving average, uh, the, the bearish crossover between the 20 week and the 50 week. So this one, of course, it does not work all the time uh, like this. This one was perfect, with only two moving averages, you can find a very interesting entry and uh, exit point uh, on the market. But uh, it's uh, very important to keep this in mind, that uh, you can avoid to be in a, in a huge counter trend on the market. If you are maybe there and you are still a low position, you didn't take profit, I don't know, for example, you bought the market around there, then it's going up and then it's going down and you are there. You say, okay, maybe I should uh, close the position because now moving average, both moving average are bearish. We have seen a bearish cross. Maybe it's too uh, too much dangerous, and I should maybe uh, close my position, or at least not buying the market if I want to buy. So it's it's quite simple, but uh, it's always very interesting, and that's I think a perfect example to see the big trends of the market and uh, and how to use a bearish cross or bullish cross uh, between uh, moving averages. To find an uh, interesting trading idea. Of course, there is some lag very, of, very, uh, very often with moving averages. That's the big problem coming from the moving average. That's the lag. Uh, very often, you have the, the signal coming a bit too late, but not always because at this, uh, in this example, you can see that the breakout, the bearish, uh, bearish cross, occur around this area. So you can see that just after the bearish cross, you can buy within this short sell within this area. And uh, you have a huge bearish potential, and it's the same thing on this one. You have the bullish cross here. If you buy the market after the bullish cross, it's not too late. You will still have a huge bullish uh, bullish move just after. So uh, that's not that's not true. That moving average always give a, a too late signal uh, for, from the market. Then Bollinger Bounds, which is uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, technical indicators, uh, especially uh, used to find uh, volatility breakout on the market. So the definition consists of a middle bound with two outer bounds. Uh, the middle bound is a simple moving average. So uh, usually we use the 20 uh, day or 20 week. Uh, it depends on the, the horizon, the time horizon uh, of the market. And uh, you have uh, the outer bounds, uh, which uh, set two standard deviations above and below the middle bar. So you can use it, um, and according to the to the founder, the Bollinger, uh, the Bollinger bond, the creditor, John Bollinger, the band should contain around 90% of price action. So uh, you can use this Bollinger band either to see uh, if uh, there is excess on the market. So you can see each time that uh, prices uh, go above the Bollinger, uh, the Bollinger bonds, you have some consolidation phase just after. So uh, just around this, uh, this area. So you can use Bollinger bonds uh, like this to see if there is excess on the market, either on the upside or on the downside. And you can also use Bollinger bonds um, so you can use this one, for example, to take profit if you are long on the market. Okay, we are just below the Bollinger bond, no excess, no excess. And right there, wow, we have a huge excess above the Bollinger boundary. So according to John Bollinger, we have 90% of chance that prices will, uh, will fall below uh, the boundary and uh, come back to a normal situation. <coughs> you can decide maybe to take profit at that time. And uh, obviously, it, uh, it's telling you not to buy uh, when uh, prices are just above the Bollinger boundary. So that's interesting when you are uh, when markets are in a, in a strong uptrend or downtrend. When markets, there is another way to use the Bollinger boundary. It's when the markets are in a trending range, sideways market, and escape from this trending range. That's what I call the volatility breakout. 
And I think that's very interesting for trading. This is the, the other example. So that's the volatility breakout. But that, that's also a perfect example of what I wanted to show you. So that's uh, UK stocks, Thomas Cook, uh, Thomas Cook Group. Um, so you can see that uh, you have the Bollinger Band diary, Bollinger Bands, and you can see that uh, Bollinger Bands are, are narrowing uh, around this area within uh, the consolidation phase. So prices are shaping a classic consolidation phase in uh, within this uh, downward sloping channel. And you can see that at the same time, with the volatility which is uh, <coughs> um, which is uh, which is falling, uh, the Bollinger Bands are narrowing until uh, until this point and uh, what happened on this point you have a huge bearish acceleration bullish acceleration sorry above the bollinger boundary so you can see that bollinger bollinger boundary are narrowing and, and, and are flat so uh, that um, that means that you will have uh, you can expect um, an increasing of the volatility so at that point you don't know if you will see an increasing of the volatility on the downside or on the upside but thanks to the, the breakout of the upper Bollinger Bandari, which was flat, which is very important, you can see that that's a major, massive signal of uh, bullish acceleration. So that's why I call it a volatility breakout, because the, um, the Bollinger Bandari are widening very strongly, and uh, thanks to the bullish acceleration. So this can give you strong signal on the market, and strong buying or bearish signal on the market. So it's, it's a bit difficult to, to use it on an everyday basis, on a daily basis, because you will not find very often such a configuration. But when you can find such a configuration, it could be very interesting for you to take advantage of this signal. Because you can see, for example, on this example, uh, just after the consolidation, prices uh, move up uh, around 40% on, the, on this stock. So uh, you can expect, uh, yeah, just after this kind of uh, bullish, uh, signal, very uh, strong up or down move. So it could have been either on the upside or on the downside. That's very important. But the idea is clearly the volatility breakout, uh, Bollinger Band which are uh, narrowing, and then we we can see a, a strong bullish acceleration and a Bollinger Band which are widening suddenly. So where would you enter here? Where would you put your stop loss? Well, either. Either you can wait for a small consolidation, but just after the validation of the breakout, you can wait. Uh, you can uh, buy uh, just the day after. Uh, it's better to wait for a daily close to see if, uh, if the, the 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 Bollinger Bands are clearly uh, widening. But the day after, you can uh, decide to buy. And uh, you, in this example, I think uh, the best stop loss will have been around the, the previous uh, acceleration, so the low of the previous day. So it would have been around this area, on this example. Is that quite a large stop loss, I can't speak. Sorry? It's so quite a large stop loss, isn't it? It's large, in this example, it's a bit large, large because the acceleration uh, starting from uh, almost, uh, so it was on, on uh, only one day, the, the acceleration has started on almost the lower end of the range. But sometimes you can have the same configuration uh, with the Bollinger Bands which are widening starting from uh, from this point for example yeah if you go back say uh seven bars to the left see yeah. where they touch the upper that's right there yes so say you broke out there say yeah yeah you are where would you put your stop loss then? if it broke out where your finger is now you mean if you uh, if it broke out if the if this one action. broke out, yeah, yeah, yeah. If this one would have broke out with Bollinger Band widening, yeah, yeah, yeah. you would have put the stop just below uh, the, the okay. acceleration, just right. wider. Yeah. So you don't put it below the lower band? Not necessarily, no. Well, you can, but it's, I think, maybe uh, a, a bit far away. But it could help you also to find some stop loss on Bollinger Band area, yeah. The lower end uh, could uh, definitely help you, or the, the upper end, to find some taking profit, as I explained in the previous. Uh, Example, uh, it could be either taking profit or it could be also support, especially when you are in a, in a range. Uh, so Bollinger Bollinger bands uh, are flat. You can uh, you can use the, the lower Bollinger band to buy the market and the upper to sell the market. Yeah, when you are in a sideways market. So what worries me in this example is that where you actually have the breakout in your circle, 
yeah. have that massive upward bar, which is quite a large, you know, very big bar. Yeah. And that would put me off because it doesn't have any strength. Yeah, this one I think is uh, useless because it's too late. I mean, the Bollinger bands have widened, so now I think the signal is given for me. So uh, even if this one could be a bit dangerous because you have a huge pipe above the Bollinger boundary. Now what I meant was, if I had entered on the previous bar, yeah, right, yeah, where the bands are widening, yeah, but when I see that next bar, which is quite a large bar, and it's like a failed breakout, yeah. I can't see clearly from here, but it looks as if it's failed. Yeah, it's it. yeah, yeah. That, that would have worried me, and I might have closed my position. Yeah, it can uh, it can be a bit worrying, but as I, as I said, for me, it's not so so much uh, worrying because uh, because you have seen the, the widening Bollinger bands. That's why it's uh, it's not so much about this one would have been dangerous if the Bollinger bands would have been flat. In in this configuration, yes. For example, just there. Yeah. Bollinger bands are flat. Yeah. You have the fast upward breakout of the, the upper Bollinger bands. Clearly, it's uh, yeah. it's okay. uh, it's not a, a buy signal. Right. So clearly, there you 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 can buy. But in this in this uh, configuration, okay, the Bollinger bands are wider. So even if we have this kind of uh, bar, I think it it can be avoided and uh, it can be uh, we can uh, uh, say it's not so much important and say okay, it's, we have the bullish signal, we can take the risk. How do you trade this intraday then? On intraday? Yeah, because this is like a longer term, isn't it? This one is a daily chart, so it's a short term chart. Yeah. Okay. On an intraday basis, you can you can uh, you do the same thing, yeah. But on a, yeah, yeah you can do the, the same. So you ideally wait for the close of the candle on the, on the night? On the actual night, the day? On a daily basis, yeah, yeah. On the, you can wait for a daily close, so uh, the closing, yeah. and the day after, yeah. you can uh, decide to enter a position. At what point the day after? I mean, 10 p.m. is when it closes. 10 p.m. G, uh, GMT plus one, which is UK UK's time. Yeah. So I'm wondering, at what point do you now place your trade? You don't want to be looking at the charts. I know you asked me. It went up. Last peak there, yeah. and if you place your trade, you came, you came down again, isn't it? So it was like a false break. Yeah, it could be, but you sometimes at the point you have to decide to enter the market. Also. <coughs> so as soon as you have decided to enter the market, you enter you enter your stop loss and your targets, mm -hmm. and uh, then you just have to wait and see if uh, your decision was good or not. So if you have the signal just right there. And you consider that it's it's enough, it's a buying signal. I want to take the risk. Then the day after, so on the spike somewhere uh, between the low and the high of this bar, you decide to buy the market with a stop loss just right there, and wait and see if uh, if I was wrong or not, if I was uh, good or not. But you can prefer if you have if the, the if the day after on this bar. Yeah. You're right. Maybe this bar could be a bit uh, worrying. So you can say, okay, maybe it's too dangerous, I don't want to take that risk, so I wait. So you can wait, and then you can see that you have a classic consolidation. So you can wait one week later, or two weeks later, you have a classic consolidation around the 20-day moving average, and you are still above the previous bottom, the previous top, so you can decide to enter into the consolidation phase. It can also happen like this. Yeah. But sometimes you don't have this consolidation. Yeah. That's why... It's like for the, the breakaway gap, uh, for the validation of the end and loss pattern. Sometimes you have the pullback to enter at a very interesting price. Of course, I could tell you uh, the very interesting price is this one because it's the bottom. But it's easy to say that now. But yeah, uh, when you are when you are there, sometimes when you have a volatility breakout, something uh, can go very, uh, very uh, quickly just after the validation. Uh, so sometimes it's better not to wait so much and not to wait the consolidation. But in this case, yeah, you could wait for the consolidation and enter at a better entry price and so to be a bit safer. There's a crossover there as well. For also, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the idea on this uh, chart is clearly the, the Bollinger Bands. Yeah. And you don't view that as a flag pattern because obviously that flag falls a bit weird. No, no, because uh, you have a bearish trend before. Yeah, yeah. So a uh, flag pattern would have been uh, in a bullish trend. So it's more like uh, just a consolidation pattern. You got uh, flag yeah, pattern. You don't want sloppy pattern. Top the arrow, actually. Yeah, yeah. This one.
It's more like a wedge, I think. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you can draw this one. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. one and this one. It's more like a classic wedge, consolidation wedge. Yeah, yeah right there. But it's, yeah, that's the same idea. Okay, for Bollinger Bands, RSI. So I think you know, you know it uh, already. So I would have been uh, brief. I will not speak about the, the formula. Okay. Uh, the ID on the RSI is tried to identify overbought and oversold uh, condition on the market. So when the prices, uh, when the RSI is above 70%, you can consider that the market is overbought, and below 30%, you can consider that it's oversold. Uh, and you can uh, use this one, as I explained, to maybe take profit if the market is overbought, if the RSI is overbought. And if you can combine, for example, a reversal pattern on candlestick, a bullish, uh, a bearish angle thing, thanks to, uh, and, and uh, combine with the RSI, which is clearly overbought, you can decide maybe to take profit. Uh, so you can use also the RSI like this. And the most interesting thing is uh, divergent, I think, on the RSI. So when you can identify such a move, bullish or bearish divergence, you can expect a reversal trend. Uh, so it's not always only, it's not only a consolidation expected, but clearly a reversal trend. Uh, so maybe on the next example, it will be clearer because on this one. Or maybe, no, just come back, please. Yeah. Yeah, what is great is that. Yeah, what I wanted to show you on this one, you, you, surely, you see this line, this vertical line. Just wanted to show you that also on the RSI you can, you can draw trend line, for example. So uh, you can see that we are in a bullish trend, okay? prices are going up, the RSI is going up, okay, fair enough. But we can draw this trend line on the RSI. And what is interesting is that pricing, uh, the RSI broke below the trend line, before prices are going clearly down. So it could uh, give you early advance signal that uh, pricing are turning down or up. Just using the same thing that on the chart, the chart you can draw a line, you can draw uh, pattern, etc. On the RSI you can do the same thing and um, it could help you and could uh, yeah, help you to have advance signal that the market is uh, turning down or up. So in this case, if you are bullish, okay, I'm bullish, uh, prices are consolidating, you can say, okay, it's not dangerous, it's just a consolidation like this, for example. But you can see on the RSI that the RSI has broken below its trend line. So that could be an advanced signal of a clear reversal downtrend, and maybe I should take profit and close my position. And so the next, uh, next example, uh, so that's why I said about uh, overbought, oversold area, so below 30% and above 70%. Um, and also the neutrality area 50% may act as a support or resistance. You can also use moving average on your RSI. Uh, on the technical analysis you can see from Trending Central, we use also a 20 period moving average uh, adding to the, to the RSI. So you can find some uh, bearish or bullish cross, bullish cross uh, between the RSI and the moving average. So you can use a lot of things. But the most important thing from the, the RSI is to identify overbought condition, excess in the market, either uh, on uh, the upside or on the, on the downside. Okay, so last, uh, so that's an example of a bullish divergence. Uh, so prices are making, uh, you can see uh, prices are making new low, just, uh, just uh, there. And at the same time, the RSI is making new low, so everything is normal. The trend is bearish, but then on the second, uh, the second low on the market, prices fail. Uh, the RSI, sorry, the RSI, sorry, uh, fail to make new low. Uh, so that's what we call a divergence. In this case, a bullish divergence. So when uh, the RSI uh, jumped above the 50% area, the neutral area, you can consider that the value, the the divergence is validated and you can expect a reversal a signal or reversal uptrend in this case. So that's another way to, to use the RSI which is uh, very common and very interesting. Uh, so don't forget that divergence has to take place within overbought or oversold area always. If you have a, a bullish or bearish divergence, 
uh, within the, around the neutrality area, it doesn't mean anything, so you can forget about it. But uh, within the oversold area, for example, uh, in this uh, on this stock, <coughs> uh, if you can identify new low on the price and uh, you cannot identify new low on the RSI within the oversold area, you could expect a reversal uh, uptrend. But always wait for a confirmation of the divergence. Don't act too uh, too early. So uh, the, the RSI has to jump above the 50% area before the, 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 the divergence uh, uh, to be validated. And uh, finally, so uh, combining tools, uh, I wanted to show you on this one how you can uh, combine moving average, horizontal uh, support resistance, candlestick pattern, uh, charts pattern, and uh, the RSI. So that's uh, UK stock that works. That's a long term, uh, well, long term chart coming from 2013. That's a daily, that's a weekly chart. So, uh, what uh, can we see on this chart? So, first of all, you can easily see the bearish trend first, coming from the, from the top, 2013. Then, moving averages, very interesting, the 20 week. <coughs> 20 week moving average. We can also identify a bearish cross between the 20 and the 50 week moving average after uh, after a, a clearly a, a bullish trend. So uh, we have a first bearish signal there thanks to the bearish cross. And then the 20 week moving average very often act as a resistance threshold. So uh, first of all, you can use this uh, this moving average to. Uh, to open position. If you uh, know you are in a bearish trend, you can use this uh, this contact, this test of the moving average to uh, enter short uh, short position on the market. Um, then, uh, what's very important to, to see and to combine is uh, with uh, the moving average and the horizontal support and resistance threshold. So, uh, from there to there. There is nothing to say. Prices are in a bearish trend, capped by the 20 week moving average, and each time prices test the moving average, prices go down again. And at this point, we can see that we have a, 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 an upward breakout of the 20 uh, week uh, moving average, so the, the red line. So we can say, okay, now uh, prices have uh, broken a, uh, the moving average, the 20 week moving average. So maybe it's time to buy the market, maybe it's time to take position or to cover my, my short sell position. Not always, because what I wanted to show you is that with combining tools, you can, it can help you not to act too, uh, too early. Because in this configuration, okay, prices have broken above the 20 week moving average, so the, the, the red line. So it's a warning signal that maybe the downtrend is uh, maybe over. But we are still capped by the key horizontal threshold, which was just above the uh, around the, the closing price of the, the previous stop. So you have this technical rebound there, and on the closing price, this is a weekly chart. So on the weekly close, you can find a key horizontal threshold at 154. So you have this key horizontal threshold. So that's a key resistance for for investor. Uh, so you can consider that okay, prices are broken above the, the 20 week moving average, but are still capped by the 154 resistance threshold, this key horizontal trend line. So maybe I should wait before covering my position or before buying the market, if, I, if I'm ready to buy. If maybe I should wait for a clear breakout of the resistance threshold. And in this example, it was perfect because as you can see, prices go down again. So uh, it, uh, it, it was great to wait for the confirmation of the breakout of the resistance threshold, the 154. So that's the first time. The first time. Then the 20 week moving average <coughs> act as a resistance again for the market, so still bearish. Prices finally resume their downtrend, and we are back in a downtrend, uh, capped by the 20 week moving average. And the second time prices fell uh, break above the 20 week moving average is just right there. And you can use the same methodology that here. So you take the previous technical rebound, so uh, it was there, the closing price on the weekly chart, which was 122.60, so the dotted line, the horizontal threshold. And, I can, and, you, and you, you just do the same thing. Okay, wait for a clear breakout of this resistance before buying the market 
or before covering my, my short cell position. And now uh, you can see that you, we have a huge bullish acceleration, but the, the week after, we have a long upper shadow and prices fail to close above the 122.60 uh, resistance threshold. So clearly, it was a, clearly a false signal on a daily basis, and uh, I think a lot of people uh, were trapped within this, uh, this kind of signal. So using this weekly chart and waiting for a weekly close above the key resistance threshold, you can avoid to, to do a mistake and uh, you are still in your, in your bearish position if you were bearish uh, before this. And then what happened? We have consecutively uh, further um, uh, two uh, bullish signals. The first one coming from the candlestick pattern, which is an inside bar. So it means that the second bar is included within the previous one, is bullish and included within the previous one. So that's a potential reversal signal. But it's not enough. As I explained, we have a strong bearish trend. So just this signal is not enough to buy the market clearly. But it's a, it's a first signal that uh, maybe the uptrend, the uh, downtrend is over. And then we have the formation of a classic double bottom pattern. So with the first uh, bottom here and the, 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 the second bottom here. So then when uh, well, I can identify such a pattern, I have to wait for the validation before saying, okay, now the trend has been reversed and we can buy. <coughs> so I can see that the, the neckline of the double bottom pattern is at the same level that my, uh, for, my uh, former horizontal threshold at 120 to 60. And then when prices can clearly break above the resistance threshold, no, I can say, okay, no, I've got the moving average has been, uh, has been broken. So uh, it's a bit more concerned there, but we don't care. We are waiting for the validation of the pattern now. So we have the double bottom pattern, which is a reversal uptrend signal. We have the inside bar, which is a, a positive signal. And finally, prices uh, manage to, to push above the key resistance threshold at 122.60. So we have combined the moving average, the resistance threshold, the double pattern, the, the chart pattern, the candlestick pattern inside bar and also the technical indicators, the RSI, because you can see that on this bottom, prices fail you to make new low on the RSI. Uh, so uh, we can consider that a, a bullish divergence is uh, in formation and uh, the RSI also gives you a bullish signal thanks to the, the upside breakout of the 50% area, which was a key horizontal resistance we showed. So then you can identify such uh, some targets. Uh, you can uh, calculate the, the measure move target of the double bottom pattern, for example, which is set at 144, uh, which has been reached very quickly. So uh, it was a bit difficult to act clearly on this uh, on this trade, but the idea was there. Uh, so the, the target of the double bottom pattern was reached very quickly, and then you can uh, you can expect if the reversal uh, uptrend is confirmed. And uh, it is likely that uh, it will be confirmed in the first coming months, thanks to all these bullish technical elements, the double bottom pattern, the inside bar, the divergence on the RSI, and also the moving average, which are turning up now. <coughs> so maybe it could take time. We could have some consolidation. But at the end, you can expect, after uh, the break of the, the, the theoretical target of the 144 threshold, you can expect, uh, for example, Fibonacci replacement level 172 which is 50% retracement of all the down move starting from the top 2013 and uh, until the bottom in 2015. So the view on the coming months on this uh, stock would be a potential <coughs> recovery towards uh, this uh, 172 area. Uh, yeah. So this example I think is perfect to show you how to combine tools and to use both at the same time moving averages, horizontal support threshold, candlestick pattern, chart pattern, and uh, technical indicators such as RSI, but you can use MSCD or stochastic. Okay, that's it. Excuse me. Thank you. For your support and resistance, do you use the body of the candle or do you focus on other things? Uh, or do you just play it depends. It depends it, on yeah, it depends. It depends. But again, I like to use the closing price. Uh, okay. If you use the, the closing price, you have to wait every day or every week yeah. to wait if we are if you have the close above or not. For example, just right there on the daily charts, 
uh, you, you can have a, a huge uh, temptation to buy the market because on a daily chart you have a close above 120 to 60. But on a weekly chart, you can see that you don't have the, the close uh, above the, uh, this point, the closing price of this point. So I think it's better to use the closing price, but it depends uh, with the configuration sometimes. So, because it's a longer term frame, you're talking about it down Yeah, this one is a longer term frame, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. do you have any thing on a shorter side with day trade? <coughs> Data, yeah, well, on, on an intraday basis, yeah. you can intraday. use the same methodology. That's that's uh, that's why it's interesting. You can combine these tools: moving average, horizontal threshold, candlestick, on an intraday basis yeah. on the forex market. Yeah. You want. And uh, using this uh, this uh, these tools can help you to to fine tune the market, uh, fine tune timings on the market. That's why. That's why technical analysis is great because you can use all these technical elements both on a long term chart or very uh, intraday chart or very short term. Okay, thank you everyone. I think now uh, we have a small presentation uh, of the tools of uh, Tronix of Farm. But uh, my uh, colleague André will do this so as soon as he's back. Except if you have questions, maybe uh, regarding the presentation. Or... Okay, you. Excuse me. Oh, yeah? Just your name. Retirements. Oh, yeah. I'll show you where it is. Yeah. So we're gonna have a quick break now for, for lunch, and uh, I'll follow with a very very brief presentation about the solutions we provide to ETMs, so you know what to ask for to your managers. Um, I, for, I just realized I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Andre. I'm the client service manager in charge of this very special relationship we have with ETX Capital, along with my colleague Syed, who is the actual account manager. And um, as a request from ETX, uh, they just asked me to run through what we offer uh, to ETX so you know what to ask for to your account managers in case you're not receiving the, the services uh, already. So I'm going to skip the, the, the background, which I already went through in the previous presentation. And I also wanted to just quickly run through the, our methodology, like in, in the sense that what you what should you do when you receive a newsletter like this? So our intention is to have a really actionable uh, and short and easy to use uh, reports. I mean, strategy uh, reports. So when you receive a newsletter or you, you go on the mirror site or the MT4 plugin, you're gonna see basically this uh, setup, which is, we, we're gonna state clearly what's our preference so it's going to be um, short positions or long positions, always giving you an opinion. Like it's going up, it's going down. Period. And we're going to give you the uh, key levels. So we're going to give you um, an, a, a clear direction to follow, plus the levels you, you you're going to use according to your appetite for risk. So in this sense. If you're looking at this chart, this chart, uh, you're gonna see like a, a bearish trend, and the first level 1.2635. So once you got this, uh, what, what are you gonna do? You have a clearly uh, strategy to follow, a clear st strategy to follow. Uh, the most important key level on this chart is what we call the pivot point, which is the blue line here which is our stop loss. This is just an, a different name for our stop loss. So you're gonna open a short position with your take profit either on this level, if you wanna go a bit more conservative, or this level, or this level. And you're gonna set your stop loss on the blue line. So you have a, a clear uh, direction to follow and uh, what to do in case things go against our opinion. So proper risk management. In case 
you, the market moves against our opinion, we also give you the op on, on the opposite side. What should you do? Like set a pending order and uh, the the opposite level. So it's very very easy to use, very actionable, and the most important for us is for you to act act on it like real fast. You know, you don't have to. Uh, it's, it's not a mystery. It's very, very straightforward, easy to use. How profitable is it? Very, <laughs> very profitable. You produce, it depends. You produce statistics. Yes, of course. It's calculated on a yearly basis, and it also depends on um, what uh, asset you're talking about. You know, right? Because this is a we get this as a daily email. Yeah. Yeah. I get a daily email from you. Checks, so, 730, like, strategy, yeah. exactly. That's what we call the pre-opening okay. email. So it's your first touch point in the morning. You want to see what the market looks like today? Pre-opening. What what should you do? Uh, that's it. Newsletters, and then we are. We move to the next one. So the newsletters are available in English, French, German, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, and Czech. So you can. Um, use whatever so you see um, first touch pay touch point you receive this in the morning pre European open opening um, once you wanna so this is the first thing you're gonna do and then you wanna keep an eye on the position that you open right <coughs> so we offer you a real-time uh, tool which is the online research platform which looks like this so this is the way you're going to keep up with the market. So when Nicholas is in Paris producing the analysis and the updates on, uh, for instance, in Forex, uh, for the major Paris, we produce an update every two hours. So we want to keep an eye on what's going on, if anything is changing, or anything you should uh, change your position, enhance, or whatever, what have you. This is the way you're going to go. You're going to go to the ETX mirror site, which is the online research platform. You're going to find all the assets that we cover for ETX in all the languages as well. Very easy to use as well. So is, that, is that accessible through the ETX yeah. Yeah, website? Yeah, that's accessible Behind through password. the client area on your platform. So yeah. when you go to log in, you'll see the button that says Trading Central. Press that and you'll be straight to the client area. I'll show you what that. So you can search for whatever you want to trade. You can also find the latest updates as well. So uh, we, we sort this out like when Nicholas or the other analysts publish, it's gonna come up. The first line is the latest report and, and simple as that. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. So the blue line is a pivot. Yes. Yeah. And that's meant to be a stop loss, you said, did you? Yes. So where's your entry? Assuming on that chart that is there, you want to go in. Sure. Yeah, what is sorry, let me come here. You see it here. Yeah. This is the sell. This is the if you, if you bought The market is there. here, right? No, no, no. The black line. The market is at the black line. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the current price. Okay. Then you buy where? Where's your entry? It depends on when you saw the report, right? No, no. Like we're now here. Show me where the entry will be. There. Ideally, ideally that's on the black line the where the market is. So that's okay. your market. Yeah, that's uh, the current price. Execution. Okay. Now, your pulls here, so your stop loss then would be this, this blue yeah. one. Yeah? So your targets would be the green one going on, yeah? Okay, yes. okay thank you very much. So did nice you move or could this blue line move during the day? That's the house. It might move, it might move. Yeah. yeah. But the, good, the cool thing about it is like, depending on your appetite for risk, you can go higher. You know, you set your tech, take profit there. So this is a bullish tra uh, chart. So you're gonna set your take profit there, okay. and you're so close here. Very easy, right? So, okay. so these entries that you're looking at is are based on what you've just presented to us. A similar kind of strategy to yeah. that. The concept. So that we know what you're looking at. We can look at it ourselves. The concept and the theory applies all over the market, right? So okay. all the ideas that he presented, they're all interchangeable. With, if you're trading equities or if you're tra trading yeah. um, forex. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so we also uh, provide to ETX an even even easier way to follow the market like this. So we call it the MT4 plugin. 
So in this sense, uh, we are overlaying our levels on a live chart on MT4. Again, very easy. Uh, intraday rise, it's a bullish bullish trend. Here's the pivot point with the level. And then the levels here. Key levels. Very, very easy to use. And very clear. It's a clear picture where the market is. You, know, you can set your stop loss, take profit. Do you provide follow up information? So, on the assumption that we enter the trade as recommended in the morning, do you then provide an update, say, later in the day as to how yes. it's going and what to do next? For, maybe? for instance, um, on a um, Forex chart, like Euro USD, for instance, uh, we provide updates every two hours. So, this will also be updated every two hours. So you just keep your chart open, you're gonna see the update every two hours. And there is a timestamp as well, so you can see when was when the last update was um, published. Right. So very easy to use. Um, if you need anything, my contact details as well. Um, yeah, do you guys have any any questions? Do you don't have an example report? Or could you go back to the report that you, you, you sent out? That you sent out in the morning. Yeah. So you, where you've got your comments, do, <laughs> I know you put your levels there. So is there an explanation of why you've chosen that position? Do you have an explanation of what your you you got your analysts have been looking at and why you decided to, to you know create that position in the market? Um. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Sure. The reason, well, the reason we, we, know, what, what, what we do, we pick the, um, the top five most popular regions in the CTS capital, and Terrain Central will put their analysis on there. So right. we're, we're the same ones every day. There isn't a reason why we pick them, or the reason is, is because they're the top instruments that trade in ETS ETS capital. Right. Okay. 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 Okay.